Greetings, I'm Zoomi Protocol, I've been a part of Anonymous for the past six years. Anonymous was born from a hacker culture which has evolved into a worldwide idea of freedom and global equality. With the help of social media, Anonymous gained volume and pace and exposed the flaws within our political and financial system to more and more people, they are waking up. They now see how corrupt our political system really is and they can see the imbalance of our financial system, what we have in this country is a corporately owned government. Our environment and water supply is being raped in the name of share prices, Anonymous exists without borders, nationality, race, religion or gender. It is the living, breathing consciousness of the free world. Every November the 5th, the Million Mask March is a sign that humanity, around the world is crying out for change. It's not even worth talking to them. It's honestly, what, what? They're not going to listen. They're, they're stuck in this system. A system that is designed to make us what? Believe that we have an illusion of choice. Puppet number one, two or three. Nah, no, I mate. Mean, I, don't, I don't agree with politicians. I have no time for politicians. that the right of the grass to regrow this week rather than in a week's time is more important than us exercising our democratic right to freely assemble then shame on you, you are made to be facilitating this process I've become tired of living in communities where people turn against one another where people look for differences, where people look to condemn immigrants people of different sexual persuasions this is a genuine opportunity for us to be inclusive positive, buoyant and optimistic about change. People have been infantilized, they've had the feeling of their own agency taken away from them and most people do not recognize their own power. Most people don't believe that they have the ability to see what's going on and to change things, that they can speak up, that they can take action. We are not living in a democracy, if you mean by democracy, that everybody has the ability to express what they want, or even the majority has the ability to express what they want. If you look at the policies favoured by the majority of the population, they are not the policies of the main political parties. The policies of the main political parties are very much influenced and dictated by the finance sector. So the simple answer would be not really, although it looks like it sometimes. Would you say, would it be fair to say that we're living in an economic dictatorship? Well, the ideal model of free market economics depends on the assumption that everybody comes to the market with roughly equal financial wealth. And then you get all these benefits which they uh, talk about in your Economics 101 courses. Now, in fact, that system very quickly degrades into something very, very unequal, where the power of individuals creates a virtual dictatorship. It's not as if we've totally lost uh, habeas corpus, but certainly the world is ruled for the benefit of the 1% more than the benefit of the 99%. Hi, I'm Patrick Ireland and I'm a student at the London Film School. I previously studied politics at the University of Sheffield where my interest in so-called fringe political movements was first aroused. Upon moving to London in 2014, I decided that I wanted to make a documentary which would focus on one of these movements, Anonymous. Uh, noodles, a little, bit, a little bit of this chicken here please, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. sweet and sour. Can I cook to you? Yeah, yeah can I cook to you. Actually make it seven up. Yeah. Cheers, yeah, thanks. By their nature, Anonymous are a highly secretive organisation. Moreover, what distinguishes them from other political movements is the fact that they are non-hierarchical. They don't have a party whip. 
members of Anonymous can express themselves freely without having to answer to some higher authority or ideology. However, the Million Mask March is a date when all of these factions can come together, united in one belief, that there is something fundamentally wrong with the society we're living in today. To learn more about Anonymous, I decided to meet with the organisers of this year's Million Mask March. The good ideas, even if someone tries to censor them, they will never be forgotten. So today, we need to assure not only that we'll be entitled to a tomorrow, but we need to ensure that that tomorrow will be better than today. Regardless which country of the world, regardless what's your background, because you stand for the same justice, equality and freedom as any of your fellow, fellow protesters. And you go to a march and you will see war refugees, you see poor people, you see the disabled, but you see rich people as well. You see leftists, you see people from the right, you see religious people, you see atheist people, you see people that are extremists and people that sincerely don't care for nothing. But all have one thing in common. They hope better for humanity. Yeah, I would hope for around 10,000 people. 10,000? I would hope about that. Every year when we see the progress, and last year they reported on 2,500 people. I think, personally, that was over 5,000. So this year, I think, we've been promoting, not like last year, just before the march starting, we've been promoting for a whole year before that. So I think we can, we can get much more people. I think the first thing to say is actually it's quite an important statement to make that Anonymous have a politics, because I think there is sometimes a tendency to, to dismiss Anonymous as as chaotic, as a meme, as just a kind of insurrectionary fashion. Um, and I think actually that's quite dangerous. And we saw that, you know, after the riots in 2011, when people decided that they weren't political, I think that maybe just because you don't understand the politics doesn't mean it's not yeah. political. So people, you know, people don't go out and buy a mask for no reason. Anons always want to focus on the here and now. You know, what are the problems around us that we can see um, you know, homelessness, inequality, poverty, you know, these, all these problems are visible to us. We don't need the abstraction of politics or of capitalism to understand them. We can see them and therefore we should address them as human beings. Although insightful, meeting the organisers of the Million Mask March wasn't enough. I wanted to meet a face behind the mask and experience on a personal level what it means to be in Anonymous. I've always felt like I didn't really fit into society in any way, shape or form. There wasn't really a box that I fitted into. As a young, When I was 14, I went to, well, when I was a child, I grew up in care and um, I had a full care order from the age of three, so um, I didn't really see much of my family. Um, and I used to run away a lot, so I spent some time homeless on the streets and um, I was abused in care. And then when I was 14, I started looking at, um, how I could change, make a difference and play them at their own game. So I, I learned quite quickly that you needed to know their rules. <laughs> you needed yeah. to know what, you know, where other people in children's homes were maybe kicking off, being restrained and things like that. I was studying the ways I, I would get what I wanted. I mean, I had them giving me £50 a week clothing allowance and a trip to, uh, then moved me to America by the end of it, you know. <laughs> I learned to play the system. But that led me to Parliament where I stood up for the Charter of Children's Rights and I also helped work with um, the Mayor of Coventry to do one for children in care. So that got me first interested in politics. And then I did try, I stood for the Lib Dems and I've stood for the Greens. And I've tried the political road, but it is so, it, it's bullshit. Tell us a little bit more about your experiences on November the 5th. Oh, it's like Christmas. <laughs> It's like every anonymous and activist Christmas, we all get together and it's, it's so exciting and I think that's the whole point in it. And um, the bonding and you just know you're going to see all these people and uh, uh, like months and months before you, everyone just puts, see you on the 5th, see you on the 5th, it's like, oh, the 5th, I can't wait. 
Uh, we'd go on protests and we normally then march in for a specific topic, but um, at the Million Mass March, it's um, really just a bit of, we're here, nothing you can do about it. We're, and we'll all have different issues that we're representing. But it's more of a just two fingers up the establishment, really. Running a mock, mm. <laughs> having a joke, having a laugh, getting together, talking, planning, plotting. <laughs> <laughs> we need some garlic, onions. Three pounds. Onions. Three pounds. I've got London prices. <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Right, now we need to get some done. The first time we ever met, um, we were at, I can't remember, it was some march, it was a while ago. Um, we were at this one march and the police had cordoned off like a, an area with ribbon. And um, I was messing around with it. I was like, we will not be held in and playing with the ribbon. And I actually got it caught under a like, shopping trolley and tripped the person over. It happened to be Pete. <laughs> what, a, what a choice of poop. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, just forget about it. You believe we, we're slaves, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, we are slaves because, I mean, we've got, uh, especially with the Tory government, who are always going on about um, welfare and things like that, if you have not got a choice of whether to work or not, you are a slave. Yeah. If it is compulsory that you work in order to get any money, you are a slave. There's no two ways about it. If you think of people as, um, it's like the people farm, we're, we're livestock. <laughs> We're all human. No, no, Behind the mask, really. we're all human. We may have different opinions, we may have different goals, but above all, we, we make sure that someone is standing tall in order to preserve what humanity should be. <laughs> Revolution. To revolution. There we go. <laughs> now, I'm a big fan of democracy. Democracy yeah. is a good thing and it has to work when everybody takes part in it. There is a real opportunity here for young people to take back this space that has their name on it. Mm -hmm. And in terms of sort of democracy, uh, do you think democracy is working or do you think there's a sort of problem with democracy at the moment when, you know, there are protests in London almost every week? In fact, there's a protest uh, going on in Parliament Square that was actually, well, it was stopped by the police. Um, I mean, do you think democracy is working when people are having to take to the streets to get their voices heard? And young people mostly as well. I think to be fair, democracy probably started because people took to the streets. The, the history of democracy has protest running through it and that, that has to be a very healthy thing. Mm -hmm. Now, as we say, we can talk about the particular policies or the particular things that get people going. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, actually, yeah. I think today's young people are using a whole range of things to make their voices heard. Some of those are but are they, informal are, are they politics and some of those are not. Are they forced to do that though? I think that's the question. Are people forced to uh, engage in politics through alternative means because uh, they feel like voting and they feel like the system itself isn't geared up to help them, so they're having to go to different channels in order to be political. It's not the fact that they're sort of politically apathetic. They want to come involved in politics, but they're having to go through different channels uh, in order to be political. Well, I think actually the great thing about the modern world is there's a ton of channels available. Yeah. So there are uh, new technical ways of making your voice heard that simply didn't exist 30 years ago. That's actually a really exciting thing. Politics, if you like, in the street is an option today alongside politics on the web, alongside politics inside Parliament, alongside politics everywhere you'd care to look. There's a really exciting range of ways for young people to be involved in their community. Now, you define your community how you like, if it's your community online or if it's your community in a village or in a town or in a city or in a country. All of that, to me, is a very exciting evolution of politics 
And I think that young people have every place at the heart of that. I would particularly encourage anyone watching this film, uh, in the group that we're talking about, mm -hmm. to get into formal politics. It won't change without you in it. But what if the formal politics doesn't represent, you know, their interests or, you know, their, their ideas? You know, I suppose it does go back to that idea of uh, all the parties being the same. And it sort of leads on to the next question as well, which is, do you think there's like a problem with the system at the moment? Like what kind of reforms are needed? Uh, because a lot of young people especially would say that, you know, neoliberal capitalism, what we're living under at this very moment, uh, isn't working. Uh, and that it needs to be reformed somehow. I mean, would you agree with that? What kind of reforms are needed? I've actually met very few young people who use that word to describe any of that. Neoliberal capitalism. People just want to get on with their lives. Well, and I think, actually, democracy has to be flexible enough to do all of that across words long and words short. Mm -hmm. Democracy means that people's needs have to be balanced. So you're not going to get the thing that you want tomorrow and just as you wanted it. You are going to have to uh, work with uh, what democracy does. But as, I say, as I've said all the way through, Democracy is there for everyone. If you, if you don't like what you see in it, get in yourself and change it. Well, some people will be doing that on the 5th of November. Have you ever heard of the Anonymous Movement? I have. Uh, yeah, well, no, we've got actually, like, I don't know, this mask here. Right, and, uh, nice. Yeah, on the, uh, on the 5th of November, uh, these guys will be marching through the streets of right, London. Good. Uh, like, and they come into Parliament to protest. Yeah. Uh, will you be there to like, hear their voices? Well, I imagine I'll be in Parliament because it's my job to. It's my job as a yeah. member of Parliament. But I'll look forward to hearing what they've got to say. Yeah, I mean, do you have any thoughts on anonymous? Uh, because, as I said, these are people we've spoken to a few of them actually, mm -hmm. and they don't believe democracy works. Right. Uh, you know, they have sort of very sort of serious concerns about democracy and about politicians. Uh, and I was just wondering if you know if there was if you had any comments on that. Not specifically, I don't. I'll look forward to hearing what they've got to say. And yeah. just on the subject of being anonymous and being behind a mask. I think a few of them um, are actually in Parliament Square right now. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's good. For, that's really good for them. As we said well, earlier they, well, in the they interview... They were in Parliament Square, but then the police came in and okay. like, warned it off and okay. stuff. Well, as we said earlier in the interview, there are a ton of good ways in the modern world to make your views known. Um, I don't get the luxury of being anonymous. I'm an MP. I'm available to my constituents in Norwich. If any of my constituents are amongst that, I'd be looking forward to hearing from them. OK. So it's the night before the Million Mask March and I'm both excited and apprehensive about it. This is the closest I'll get to experiencing what it's like to be an Anonymous. From what I've learned speaking to people within Anonymous, the Million Mask March isn't about one single issue. People were there for all kinds of reasons, protesting against what they perceive to be unfairness, inequality and corruption within our society. The march seems to be a more personal experience. You as an individual decide what you're protesting against, whether the person marching next to you believes it or not. The point is though that things do need to change, that we can't go on living like this. And the march is that statement. It's a statement of solidarity, it's a statement of unity, it's a statement that we're all in this together despite our differences. And I suppose that in itself is the essence of revolution. Holy sh! Have you guys seen this? Oh my god, it's amazing. That's what the people look like. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Alliteratively named, peculiar, shady, yet populist organisations are the best chance people have in civilised society of having their voices heard. And what would you say to people who say there is no alternative to the current system? Uh, that, you know, oh well, the system works, you know? Well, I think that people that say the system works work for the system. They're people for like, you know, if you're, you know, working at Exxon, in an, an executive position, you've just turned over profits of 58 billion, then this, it's going really well, everything's yeah, cool, yeah. everything's fine. If you're an ecological activist concerned about the likely consequences of Exxon drilling in the Arctic or the continuing practice of fracking, then things aren't working so well. If you're one of the millions of people in this country living below the poverty line, things ain't working so well. If you're one of the Americans who had their house foreclosed as a result of the financial collapse in 2008 in America, things ain't working so well. The, the system works fine and there uh, for people that are, that are benefiting from it, like any system, I suppose. But yeah, of course, there are many alternatives. There are millions of different ways of organising society. Go on to, My yeah. point is, you, look, any system that deconcentrates power is probably better for people today. We live in a situation where we live in, in a time where transparency is possible, where technological communication and participation is possible. My idea, my I don't know what I learned late, lately. Listen to people who know more than me was that collectivised, localised. Uh, decentralised authority is the way that we, we should go. And, you know, I think it's very hard for some people to imagine change coming about, especially the point you made about when you're voting for parties who don't represent you. So how, how can we change the system? Get involved yourself in anything anything that's affecting your life. Get involved with creative direct action. If you think you're paying too much rent, if you think your bank are hustling you for your mortgage, get involved with other people who feel the same. If you're a, like the people on the New Era estate in East London, they have organised themselves to confront a big private development firm, Westbrook, and they are winning. They are going to win. It's not because of a politician, an MP, or a councillor. They can't do anything because they all work for Westbrook or companies like it. You know, I'm being reductive, yeah, yeah. but if you want change, as dear old Gandhi says, be the change you want to be in the world. And that means participate, because it's fun and it feels better. One of the things we've lost as a result of this individualistic, materialistic culture is our sense of community and togetherness. One of the ways that we can regain that is through collective action and creative direct action together. And do you think there'll be a revolution? It's Will inevitable. Come about? It's inevitable. Yeah. It's only a timing issue now. <laughs> it's happening quickly though. The establishment know it's coming. Of course. They're yeah. terrified. <laughs> They're terrified. Well, cheers. Thanks so much for Thanks doing for this. Thanks for coming to talk to me on the street corner. So November the 5th wasn't the start of the revolution. But then again, history has taught us that revolutions happen over decades, sometimes even hundreds of years before real change comes about. But 
What this experience has taught me is that Anonymous do have something genuine to say about politics. They're not all conspiracy nuts and cyber thugs. Anonymous represent what I'm sure most of us feel deep down, that there is something wrong with the world, that humanity can do better for itself. And perhaps most importantly, they remind us that a better world is possible, a fairer world. And that, comrades, is a world worth fighting for. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you.